Now I want to talk a little about a little bit about cotton because that is also pretty readily available to most of us. For this one I've used a houndstooth pattern and variations on houndstooth and I've used contrasting colors in a 10 dent heddle and the yarn is a light worsted Australian egg ply cotton also from Bendigo Woolen Mills. The 10 dent heddle for this one makes a tighter weave and that was what I was going for for this particular pattern. I was going to be using the fabric for a bag and so I wanted some, a fabric that was quite dense. So normally I might not use the 10 dent heddle for that type of cotton and in fact the um, ill-fated scarf that I showed you earlier that is too stiff is exactly the same cotton and in the same heddle but for the scarf it didn't work because it was too stiff but for the bag it worked perfectly because it did have that little bit of stiffness as well as being a lovely attractive yarn that's easy to weave with uh, once again it's a thicker yarn so it weaves up quickly so now let's leap to the next level of weaving cotton which is the one that's probably most common in the weaving world and that is the 8-2 width so it looks like 8 slash 2 and that is a measurement as I said before if you're interested in all of those measurements and what they mean and how they apply to you um, check out my online course what do the numbers mean but just to give you a little comparison of width this is the 8-2 cotton and this is the cotton I was talking about for my last project which is the light worsted or DK weight cotton. So they're different in a few ways. They are definitely different thicknesses but also this thicker cotton feels very soft. It's a slightly looser ply and this 8-2 is really very strong and it doesn't feel as soft when you actually feel the yarn but it can make very soft pieces of weaving and it's really strong it's a bit of a workhorse now this yarn will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer so I have found specific manufacturer that I really like and that's readily available to me in Australia um, most of the cotton yarn that I have now of this 8-2 cotton is from Morris Brassard in Canada and I've tried a variety of other yarns and some of them have just been a little bit inconsistent and unreliable for example sometimes you'll get a cone that's the yarn is rough um, or it seems rougher and then the next time you get it it's fine it's just normal I don't really appreciate inconsistencies like that because I want to know what I'm getting and what I can expect from what I'm getting and I feel like with these yarns the Morris Brassard yarns you they are extremely consistent so none of these brands are sponsored these are just things that I use and I'm sharing with you how would we be using the 8-2 cotton well I've got a little stack of towels here to show you because towels are the most common thing that you would probably be weaving with this type of cotton so here I've got these are towels from my happy Fibonacci pattern these two and one's in plain weave and the other one is a pickup pattern this pattern is available both as an online class and in my Etsy shop if you're interested and so there is a recommended set range for 8-2 cotton I believe it's 18 to 24 ends per inch I really like to weave at 20 ends per inch with it and so what are my options for doing that on the rigid heddle well the most logical option would be to take my 10 dent heddle and to double my ends because if I've got doubled ends in each of these slots and holes instead of 10 dents per inch which this heddle normally gives me I'll have 20 so it's a very easy way to figure that out and then you have the choice of whether you also want to double your weft ends or whether you want to leave them single what would influence this decision well for me for kitchen towels which these are kitchen towels I I like them to not be stiff and I like them to be you know sort of soft and supple uh, they're still really strong towels that will last a long time 
but I would just prefer them not to be too stiff. I think that they're more absorbent that way. So what I nearly always do is use a single weft. So even though I would take my 8-2 cotton and I double it in the warp to get that 20 ends per inch, I would use only a single thread in the weft. If you wanted a completely balanced weave, you can double it, but you'll get a stiffer fabric. Um, so yeah, I very, very often, you when I'm using 8-2 cotton and 20 ends per inch, that is what I'll do. Doubled warp, single weft. But that's for you, the weaver, to experiment with and see what you personally like because my tastes are not necessarily going to be your tastes. Another couple of examples of towels here using 8-2 cotton. So for this one, I have used, I've used colors, stripes of colors in the warp. I've used a four shaft draft and I've used a, this is a very light green, although it doesn't usually appear that way on camera. It often looks kind of yellow or something like that. But this light green I have used in some of the stripes and also as my weft yarn. When you get into weaving twills, so I said that I was going to mention this, you use a different formula for figuring out the set. So when you're figuring out your set for a balanced plain weave, if you have watched my set video or you understand how to figure out your set, you get your wraps per inch on the inch ruler, divide it in half and that is your set number for or well, that's your most appropriate set number for that yarn but you don't do that for twill there's a different equation you still do the wraps but you don't divide it in half you actually multiply it by mm, I think the number is 0.67 um, don't hold me to that I think that's right but um, I would have to check it because I am not the world's best mathematician so anyway, the point being that with twill, you set it closer together than plain weave because it doesn't have that over under interlacement. It's different. Sometimes you'll have um, two, two over, three under, two over, three under, etc. So it requires a little bit of different treatment there. This one is just another example of 8-2 cotton and it, this was um, an eight shaft pattern in hindsight it's not the best pattern for a kitchen towel um, and that's why I haven't actually used it yet it's been stored away because I love the pattern but it does have longer floats and you know in the kitchen longer floats are not all that desirable but anyway for this one I actually used an 8-2 cotton in the warp so the warp was thinner and then I used a slightly thicker cotton I think it was a fingering weight cotton which is this dark purple in the weft so that really made the pattern stand out more and that was the effect that I was going for there what do you think this pattern would be nice for if it's got floats that are a little bit too long for a kitchen towel I don't know I, I, I know that I really like the pattern maybe um, like a table runner or something like that that's not going to be um, you know bashed about and everything but um, I don't know it's it doesn't really speak to me when I look at it what do you think I would love to know what you think when you look at that pattern what does it make you think of that you would want to use it on now when I'm talking about the cottons I have to mention also that there is unmercerized these two are unmercerized cotton and there is mercerized and I don't know if you can see on the camera that this pink one has more of a sheen than these two so usually unmercerized cotton there are a couple of differences it usually comes on a larger cone so it might come on it's 227 grams or something don't ask me to convert to ounces I don't know and this mercerized cotton will often come on a hundred gram cone so it'll often look smaller you can see that it looks smaller than the other two and also just looking at it you can see that it has a different twist to the 8-2 cotton and it also has that sheen that's the the real giveaway is the sheen that's on it now what would I use the mercerized cotton for well this is a great debate really 
and I'm a little bit opinionated about this. I think that it, the Mercerize gives a very nice effect, but I don't use it all that much and I don't think I'll be buying it that much in the future. I don't want to put people off buying it. I'm just giving my honest opinion. The reasons being that, well, number one, you get less on a cone. So it's a little bit less economical. You get more bang for your buck on these ones. It's, some people argue that it's more absorbent um, if you use it, say, for kitchen towels. But I find the unmercerized is more absorbent. Another thing is the unmercerized has been through less chemical process. This has been through a chemical process to make it all shiny. And also, I just find this a little bit of a pain in the neck to use because when you get good lengths of it, it's, I'm probably not going to be able to show you with just this little bit, kind of can, it curls up on itself. Whereas the 8.2 cotton, it doesn't, it, it's just, it's, it's so easy to use. It's just, um, it doesn't cling to itself. So I did... I once used this, I once used Mercerized cotton for quite a wide project and it was quite long, it was a table runner and I just found it a pain in the neck. The, the threads, as I was bringing them through the heddle, prior to actually threading, instead of behaving like your 8-2 cotton and also had the, the ends doubled so there were extra threads there as well, um, but yeah, instead of just like nicely hanging there and just waiting for me to come thread like my uh, friend A2 Cotton here, it all started to contract upwards and twist and not with itself. And following that project, I just thought, I don't think I'm going to bother too much with this in the future because it was just a real headache. The sheen is lovely. Um, I do have quite a bit of this cotton. I got it. I got a really good deal on um, some bulk mercerized cotton at some point and that's why I have so much of it and yeah I will use it actually you know what I've used it with the inkle loom and that's better because you're winding the cotton directly onto the inkle loom and it's always under tension so it doesn't really have the chance to start to coil up and make mischief like it does on another loom. So there you go. I use it on the inkle loom and it looks lovely, makes really lovely bands. And in fact, if you look at my inkle loom video on weaving a floral band on YouTube, um, I use mercerized cotton. So there you go. It has a place, it definitely has a place. And a lot of people love it. So if you love it, great, good for you. <laughs> Just wanted to quickly show you one of my favorite yarns to weave with it is cotton which is a blend of cotton and linen linen on its own can be a little bit difficult to use but the blend of cotton and linen together i love it for kitchen towels it's like my favorite go-to yarn for kitchen towels it gets a bit fluffy on the loom so it sheds quite a bit of fluff and that can be a little bit irritating so it's good to sort of clean up as you go along, maybe get the vacuum in there to just get those extra fibers away. Apart from that, it's beautiful. When you get your towels off and you give them a hot wash, they come out gloriously soft um, and it's wonderfully absorbent. So that is really my go-to for kitchen towels. One thing that can be confusing about cotton is it uses a different measurement system to the other cottons. Okay, so if you look at these two together, and I'm sorry I've only got this, um, this undyed cotton for you to compare to, but if you compare those two together, they look a very similar width and a very similar weight of yarn, but you won't buy 8-2 cotton. It's a different measurement. This is a 22 slash 2 cotton. And once again, I explain all of these measurements in my course. Now, we've got to move on to one of my other favorites, and that is bamboo. Bamboo comes in all shapes and sizes. As you can see, this is a thick one, and this one is made up of lots of different strands. 
and those strands can come undone a little bit as you're weaving but it's not usually a big problem this is the weight or the width that I really like to use this actual bamboo here is bamboo 7 it can be a little bit hard to come by I got mine from BB yarn in Queensland in Australia um, lovely lady Ursula stocks them but they can be a little bit hard to come by in other countries a really good equivalent is a 5-2 bamboo and I think Valley Yarns makes a 5-2 bamboo that would be very similar in size to this one what do I love about bamboo well okay it's incredibly soft it is so gloriously soft it has a wonderful sheen and I think it's very forgiving and easy to use so for the thicker one let's have a look at my example of the thicker yarn first I have here a scarf in a twill pattern with this quite thick bamboo and I really love usually when I'm weaving twill I'm using a very thin yarn but for this one uh, I use this thick bamboo and you can see the fringe is quite thick too but I really like that and you know bamboo surprisingly has a bit of weight to it even the thinner bamboo it looks very light as a thread but when you weave it up it actually has it's a little bit weighty and so it makes a really good cool weather scarf surprisingly anyway this is the heavier one in this gorgeous twill pattern this one is from my three Haddle adventures class which is one of my most popular online classes for obvious reasons if you're interested in weaving with three heddles you might want to check that one out this is the project for that class bamboo is really easy to wash um, it's really lovely to weave with and it wears really well I like the way it it's not so fluffy like something like wool might be and so the pattern is often very defined and I think that's just lovely now I'll have a look at a couple of others that use this lighter weight of bamboo I've got two examples here of my Moroccan scarf this is my free scarf pattern when you sign up to my newsletter I will try and remember to put a link to that underneath as well uh, two different examples and these scarves are reversible too these are both in the bamboo 7 um, but don't forget you can substitute for 5-2 bamboo and I've used here a what I've done here for this one is something a little bit different I've combined two colors in the warp so I've used a blue and a green together in the warp and then I for the weft I've used a lovely purple across so the pattern it's a little bit busy but it's not too overwhelming if I reverse that you can see more of the warp colors on the other side and this one I used a lovely green in the warp well would you look at that it's the same green that I've got here and I used a burgundy in the weft right there this pattern also appeared in the wheel magazine by Ashford uh, a couple of years ago now so yeah I used that burgundy for the weft this is a, a simple pickup pattern and if I turn that over then you can see more of the warp than the weft so both sides are really lovely um, obviously I haven't ironed these ones in a little while but that's another thing about bamboo if you give it a light press with the steam setting on your iron it sheens up again comes up really soft and beautiful again so even though it crinkles a little bit if you've had it sitting around I mean I've had these hanging in my wardrobe so they've kind of been bunched up a bit like that um, but yeah a simple press and they're good to go again and that they're, they're so comfortable and beautiful to wear let's have a look at another couple of bamboo ones because I do have a few bamboo items seeing as I'm so in love with it this one okay this is an undulating twirl pattern um, same again bamboo seven look that's the same purple there but I used a blue in the wet uh, the warp and it's not as easy to see hopefully you can see that that really nice twirl pattern there um, I used a 
uh, this was woven at 20 ends per inch so on the rigid heddle loom that would be a 10 dent heddle doubled threads warp threads doubled and this scarf actually won first category in uh, first prize in the weaving category in the Melbourne show a few years ago so that was lovely and this scarf is the same pattern with slightly different colors this shows off the pattern a little bit more this one is from my brand new table loom weaving class so this is the project if you enroll in that class also woven at 20 ends per inch but obviously on a table loom a little bit different um, I've done the green for the warp and the purple for the weft um, and these this pattern's reversible too it's just pretty much the same on each side so lovely um, and you can see one of the things I love most about bamboo is the drape it's just isn't that beautiful it's just really nice really good to wear and as I said has a little bit more weight to it I wanted to show you this sampler um, just so that you can see a combination of the yarns so what I did for this this is a monk's belt pattern by the way um, I did this on four shafts on my floor loom so the background fabric that you can see is the dark purple and that's an 8-2 cotton and a lot of the other yarns are various cottons the spots in this are silk but the blue is this bamboo seven any of these sort of sheeny parts that you can see are bamboo seven so soft and beautiful uh, this one is cotton chenille uh, sorry is rayon chenille which is this one it's a sort of I think it's a, sh a gold shade they call it on the purple background here I have incorporated some silk and then up here we come to the bamboo seven again here and here and then up the top I've brought in some hand dyed tensile and then back to the bamboo seven so that's sort of showing you a combination of 8-2 cotton with some thicker and I guess more showy yarns so I've used the showy yarns as a feature to make the pattern really stand out absolutely love monk's belt I want to do more of it I want to do a class on it <laughs> eventually I will now some of my other favorites that I absolutely have to show you well this one is bamboo which I've already shown you but this is an even thinner bamboo so that's 8-2 bamboo and these two lovelies are tensile I love tensile it's made from wood pulp interesting yarn it's strong it's quite thin this is an 8-2 tensile right here but it does actually feel thinner than your regular 8-2 so you want to take that into account with your set and this is some tensile that I hand dyed which was a real labor of love because I had to make it into big skeins um, and such a thin yarn it took a long time but I think it was worth it <laughs> I just wanted to show you that one but here's an example of a project using tensile and bamboo together this is my galaxy scarf which is a pattern available in my Etsy shop and it has a lot of different colors in it I've incorporated the the warp is mostly bamboo and then a lot of these warp stripes you can see in here are tensile um, I've also added in a little bit of metallic make sure if you are incorporating some sparkle into a project that it's appropriate for the project so if I was using this for a wall hanging it wouldn't really matter if my sparkle was kind of rough but because I want to wear this around my neck it needs to be very wearable I want to make my sparkle so that I can't even feel any difference between it and the other tensile so I also got this gold sparkle from Morris Brassard and I think it's called gold monofilament or something once again I'm going to have all of these links on the blog for you I've mentioned so many yarns and so many different things that it's going to be better if I just put them all into a blog post here is that gorgeous bamboo and tensile together and I reckon they are a match made in heaven they are glorious together so good love them both very light so this is a, um, 
as I mentioned this is an 8-2 bamboo so you can see it doesn't have the same weight as the other bamboo that I mentioned like the bamboo 7 or the heavier bamboo that I showed you already. I'm going to finish off with this wonderful yarn. I wonder if you can tell what it is by looking at it. It's different to all of the yarns that I've mentioned so far. It's a natural fiber and this particular one is very very fine. It's a little bit like sewing thread. Actually I think it's thinner than sewing thread this one. And this is silk and it is the weight is 62 so 60 slash 2. Compare that to your um, something like your 8-2 cotton and you'll see that it's very fine. I had used silk previously. I'd used it in a actually in a light worsted weight a DK weight and I didn't like it as much it was okay but it was a little bit heavy and the project didn't turn out quite as well as I wanted to um, I dyed it silk dyes beautifully and I think I did a plain weave but I just I wasn't into it that much so this, I've only used this on a multi-shaft loom. I haven't used it on a rigid header loom. You do need to be able to achieve tight tension to use something fine like this and slippery. Silk is very slippery as I already mentioned, especially in its blends. But if I was going to attempt this on a rigid header loom, I think what I would do is probably use my well, I'd have two options. I would probably go for the tendent or the very fine 15. I haven't actually mentioned the 15 yet, have I? Because I don't use it all that often. Um, I do use it with 10-2 cotton rather than 8-2 cotton. It's good for that um, because I can double the ends and I can get 30 ends per inch. But for this particular silk, the projects that I've woven with it, I've woven at 40 ends per inch. So if I was going to try and achieve that in the rigid heddle, um, I could either put four ends, so quadruple your ends in the ten dent, or if I wanted to go up a little bit higher and go for 45 ends per inch, then I could triple my ends in the 15 dent. Let me show you projects that I've made with this gorgeous silk and I'll tell you a little bit about how I made them too. Okay this one first this is an undulating twirl pattern I believe this was a oh I can't remember if it was a I think it was a four shaft draft. Um, so it's got this lovely I'm not sure if you can see the pattern because it is extremely fine but it's got the the lines, the twirl lines that come into a point and then go up almost like, um, you know, bird's wings. That's what it makes me think of. So it has these sort of V sections all across and it actually sort of creates this optical illusion as you look at it because the silk's so fine, it's so sheeny. And then I did a little bit of an extra trick as well. I'll tell you about it. So in the warp, I've used this color and um, as I said 40 ends per inch so a lot of ends in there but I've just used the warp uh, the purple as a solid warp color and then for the weft what I did is I combined one each of magenta and orange together so I wound them both onto a bobbin at the same time and that gives this sort of optical illusion. It makes the shimmer and the sheen of the silk even more prominent because you've got those complementary colors going across the weft together and then they're contrasting with the purple. And it's really quite glorious. I think I better give you a close up of this one. Okay, so maybe uh, you can see the pattern a little bit more there and the sort of shimmer and glow so beautiful and silk is just incredibly light I mean look at that so beautiful I'm not saying it was easy to weave with it wasn't it's I I always wanted to weave with really super fine threads that was one of my aims as a weaver and 
after this I thought hmm you know what I think I don't mind the thicker threads after all <laughs> it took a really long time to warp the silk is it's fiddly because it's slippery but then it's so fine that you're just fiddling around I mean the result is worth it but if I was say making these to sell I'd probably be wanting to charge a lot for them and this is another silk scarf that I wove this one I really love this one um, I entered this into the Melbourne show got third place I was disappointed because well I already mentioned it took so long to weave it was so fiddly and um, I also just think it's a really beautiful scarf so I was kind of disappointed with third place but anyway this time in the warp I did a similar thing to what I did in the weft of the last one so I combined equal amounts of magenta and orange together in the warp 40 ends per inch still and that was my warp and then I just wove the weft straight with the purple oh I can't remember whether I used um, double weft ends it's pretty likely that I did to try and make that pattern stand out a little bit this is another beautiful twill pattern and once again I mean this in the right light it looks like it glows so yeah silk's really special um, harder to use fiddlier to use but you know life goals and all that so I'm happy that I did this and I'm sure that I'll weave with silk again um, probably maybe when I'm retired and I have more time no hopefully before then hopefully way before then it's it's really beautiful but yeah it's a little bit difficult because it does take so much time so if you're selling you will have to charge a lot and you know it just depends whether you've got that sort of following that people are prepared to pay that amount and understand the work that's gone into it but um, oh, love fluttery fluttery silk so light all right, I'll, I'll stop going on about it now but it is beautiful I all right <laughs> okay so that's my that's the last one I've got to show you and I'll leave as many links down below as I can and I'll definitely link to the blog post so that you can hop on over there and check out all the links and the extra information that I've got there for you thanks for watching right to the end I think I now need another cup of tea so I'm going to go and refill that I really enjoyed my time here with you if you like this kind of video a little more informal a little bit more chatty let me know in the comments if you have any further questions because I'm sure that I have missed things that I actually wanted to say in the video please leave me a comment as well I reply to all comments and I'd love to hear from you so until next time happy weaving